How's it going, guys? So this is actually a challenging question for me to discuss because the fructose versus galactose disorders can easily get very fucking confusing very fucking fast. And this could be a 19 minute clip, but I'm going to try to make it very fucking concise for you. Okay, tell you exactly what you need to know for you assimilating. Be all cozy here. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Links are down below. Now let's start the question here where we have a one-month-old girl, failure to thrive, poor feeding. She's exclusively breastfed. Physical exam shows cataracts, jaundice, hepatomegaly. She has hypoglycemia. Urinalysis shows presence of reducing sugars. Questions merely asking which enzyme is deficient. And I said I would cut to the chase. Firstly, you do not need to know the biochemistry pathways. Waste of fucking time, all right? When you see this uh, descriptor, presence of reducing sugars in the urine, what this means is that we have merely a fructose or galactose disorder. It's nonspecific, does not refer to any one diagnosis. Now, the first very high yield point is that the galactose disorders are going to present within a couple months of birth because lactose in breast milk and formula is a disaccharide that's composed of a galactose and glucose molecule. Okay, so the child is exposed to that from birth. So in contrast, the fructose disorders will present when the child commences uh, juice, uh, fruit consumption, honey, which will generally be whenever uh, six to 12 months after birth, okay? But it's not going to be within the first few months of birth. So that's our first high yield point. Now we can see this child's one month old. So right away we say, okay, we're dealing with a uh, galactose disorder here, especially since she's exclusively breastfed. Um, the other high yield point is that this finding of cataracts is uh, characteristic of the galactose disorders, okay? Um, Galactose can be converted via uh, aldose reductase into galactitol, which has, a, has an osmotic pull in the lens of the eye, causes cataracts, okay? So uh, that being said, uh, another high yield point, and this is where I, I briefly mentioned that we do not need to waste our time with the biochemistry pathways, but I'm going to tell you an important detail here. There are two enzymes for each, for both the fructose and galactose pathway, okay? Two enzymes for each. Deficiency of the second enzyme in both pathways is worse. So aldolase B is the second enzyme for the fructose pathway. Galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase is the second enzyme for the galactose pathway. So deficiency of either aldolase B or G1P uridyl transferase, bad fucking situation, okay? Now in this in this prep for this presentation, this doesn't sound good, does it? Subjectively, even if you don't really know what's going on, we have failure to thrive, poor feeding, there's hypoglycemia, hepatomegaly, jaundice, holy shit. Like this just subjectively doesn't sound good, right? And we say, okay, well, it's within a couple months of birth. This is a galactose disorder. So we're going to choose the second enzyme that sounds bad because this presentation's bad and we know that this is a galactose disorder. So our answer is merely just galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase. If subjectively it doesn't sound as bad, let's say the kid is one month old, two months old, only has cataracts, that's it. They don't mention hypoglycemia, they don't mention hepatomegaly, they don't mention jaundice. It's just, it's not as bad, quote unquote. The answer is just simply galactokinase deficiency. That's the first enzyme in the pathway. And then for the fructose disorders, it's the same thing. We said, it. let's say a 12 month old kid who's recently started honey, fruit juice, and it sounds really bad, okay? I mean, they give you hypoglycemia, hepatomegaly, jaundice, holy shit. And you say, well, it's only started recently with table sugar, honey, fruit juice. Uh, so we're going to choose a fructose disorder. It sounds bad. So we're going to go with aldolase B deficiency, hereditary fructose intolerance. Whereas if it, the patient's asymptomatic and has reducing sugars in the urine, the, it's, which starts after one year, uh, that would be uh, fructokinase deficiency. Okay. So galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase deficiency is uh, the answer here. This is um, uh, classic galactosemia. can also be associated with E. coli sepsis. Weird fucking detail, but I'm just mentioning it. Um, and the other point I'll quickly make about choice E, glucose 6-phosphatase deficiency, which is von Gierke, that's glycogen storage disease type 1, is this will be a very sick kid who has lactic acidosis, hepatomegaly, and hypoglycemia, okay? Uh, the glycogen storage disease is obviously a, a lengthy discussion in of itself, and I'll probably make a separate clip on that. So you know the deal. I'm going to continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.